if you're watching this, it means that we've surrendered. We've lasted about a month, two weeks in the city of Mariupol. Aidan Aslan was one of the last soldiers left defending the besieged city of Mariupol. Bunkered down in the Ilyich steelworks, his unit continued fighting until it ran out of supplies. We finally exhausted all our resources, um, ran out of ammunition, food. The only thing we had left was water. Aidan knows he's about to be captured by Russian forces. You can sense his fear in this video filmed in April last year. Hopefully you'll see something from me in the future. Knowing what I know about how Russians treat like uh, POWs, so I knew it was not going to be a very nice like thing to go through. Around 500 members of the 36th Marine Brigade put down their guns and surrendered. Aiden says his Russian captors soon singled him out because he held a British passport. They uh, took me to Donetsk. There was like some guy waiting there. He just like continued to beat me with like a police baton. And um, this is where that scar came from. And then he also stabbed me on the left shoulder here and then dragged me into the uh, building where I was like beaten for like two hours. At one point I was like knocked unconscious. Despite the ferocity of the attacks, Aiden says other POWs had it even worse and that a man in the cell next to him was beaten to death. There was no like screams or anything. We could just hear him just beat, beat something. There was like no reaction from whoever he was beating. We heard the medic like give the time of death, just hearing it and then knowing that like that person's now dead. He'd only, he'd been in the custody of that prison for only like 20 minutes and now he was dead. It was useful to the Russians to keep Aiden alive. He soon became one of their propaganda tools. Yeah, I, I agreed to this. I asked for this. So this is of your own will? Yeah. This video was filmed against Aiden's will and in breach of the Geneva Conventions. He says it was one of over 100 videos he was forced to make while a POW. I easily uh, misread the information and joined the wrong side. He says he was hooded, handcuffed and threatened beforehand. It's the mental toll of doing the propaganda as well, but it's also the mental toll of like being taken out. You'd go out and then they'll like mention something about the death sentence that's coming up, like your court case or like saying that you're going to be like shot, you could be shot any day or even tomorrow. Um, so there, there was that like mental toll and then the other like side of it was like, it was like very like heavy on me because I, I didn't want to say like any of this stuff. Because like anyone who's like anyone who's ever like followed me like for years like they know like I'm extremely like pro-Ukrainian um, and like pro-freedom. The Russian Ministry of Defence was contacted by 7:30, but did not respond to these allegations. Aiden has released a book to tell the world about how Russia has treated prisoners of war during this conflict. So you're happy with the book? Yeah. Um, and he's written it with legendary war reporter John Sweeney. It's all like systematic, like they've done it in like every war they've been in. A man who has for over 20 years documented how Putin's troops have tortured both civilians and POWs. I first came across torture as a systemic part of, um, of what the Russian killing machine does 23 years ago in Chechnya. There were elephant gas masks. And in Chechnya, what they used to do was you, you, you'd be handcuffed behind your back, they would put the mask on, and then they would squirt CS gas up this nozzle, and then the victim would start drowning in his own snot and tears. And they called this, because of the snot, the elephant. I saw the elephant gas mask in Kherson police station, and I know that the elephant gas mask torture was used in Isium. So what you have is, for 23 years, a system of torture on a massive scale. And it's something I saw evidence of last year, when I visited a police station in Izum for foreign correspondent that had been turned into a Russian torture chamber during the occupation. And you can see 
marks in the wall. Yeah. There is 29 June 22. Yeah. And God save us. I mean. It's hard to imagine being stuck in here day in, day out. It's dark, it's damp, it's cold. Men were crammed in this room for days on end. For Aidan, his experience with the Russian justice system has also left scars. In June last year, he was one of three POWs sentenced to death by firing squad by a sham court in Donetsk. He was released in September as part of a prisoner swap brokered by the Saudis. Oops. Aiden has now moved back to Ukraine. 7.30 was in Kyiv when he returned to the capital for the first time since his release. I came back to Ukraine because, like for me, Ukraine's my home. My fiance is Ukrainian, and I would consider myself, like to a degree, like a part Ukrainian. Now he wants to help get justice for Ukrainian civilians and soldiers who've been victims of war crimes. I got off lucky with like what they did to me. However, what they're doing to other Ukrainians is far, far worse. These people need to be found and sentenced. And I think the only way for that to happen is, is, is like something similar to like The Hague or some huge like war crime tribunal because there is going to be one of those at some point. <laughs> 